I think, you know, a couple entities like the World Economic Forum, people, you know, look at that, I think, decently enough are they're aware of that right now. But like, I think the one organization that does rule the world and is a part of all this that a lot of people don't even know about is the Bank of International Settlements, the World Central Bank. IMF. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, ha like you have like I, I, it took me a while bef when I was basically studying money, how all this system works. Before I even heard of uh, the Bank of International Settlements, I'm like, wow, that's an interesting kept secret, right? But they, they have all these levers, man. You know? So give us a breakdown of, of, of that scene. So the Bank of International Settlements, there's a really good documentary called Princes of the Yen. Send uh, it. Yeah, fucking Send amazing. It. This man is a is student. This guy's yeah. always trying to... Like, yeah, this, send it, bro. I'll watch it. Oh, dude, it's one of the best documentaries ever. Um, the guy um, who's in it, basically, he talks about how... Japan essentially I'm making a note to make sure y'all send me this shit. Oh, I yeah, will. I yeah, will. Of course. Don't worry. Um, but basically Japan fucked their own country over in order to well, they be, basically gave a blood sacrifice in order to become part of the financial elite globally, which is the Bank of International Settlements. The club. The club. The club. Exactly. It's like, okay, so the Japanese economy is doing too good in the eighties. Well, if you kind of just mess it up a bit, make it normal, you know, and fuck it up a little bit, then give us some land. And when we take some of that land, then now we own a piece of, of your country. Um, you're basically blood brothers with the Bank of International Settlements now and all this shit. And then, you know, um, they're forever part of the cabal. <laughs> but, you right. know. It, and it, there's a lot of trade deals and stuff yeah. going on. It, it, it isn't magic that the United States is deglobalizing, but the, the Japanese are part of that trade deal. Yeah. And, well, and all the, you know, that's why BRICS is coming around and all yeah. that stuff they're, because the, the bricks are trying to romance the mexicans right now you believe mm. that shit i uh, that literally came across my desk bro i literally think that would start a war yeah i believe that the wall is not built so we can supply manpower so i don't think spanish men make less money mm. but i do believe without spanish men for example if you were to make air e-verify completely like almost like a bacon davis project right i think it would shut the american economy down mm. because so many spanish people are coming to do the work that right. americans will no longer do yeah. if i were and look i would never but if i were president i would give all of them amnesty make them pay a penalty for just to make it fair for the people that did mm. you know do it right right and start getting that tax money because a lot of people don't pay Spanish workers correctly. No, they don't. They I pay my guys absolutely correctly. They have to have a social security card. We do all that stuff. Um, but I'm telling you now, there's a lot of cash under the table. There's a lot of not paying taxes, a lot of 1099. The a Spanish guy can go get a tax ID number and then he can have a new identity right. tomorrow. You know, you, you, you want these things you, happen. You, you, you know yeah. something like because obviously you're Mexican here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But I, no. I, I, no, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You know, and the thing, there, there's a lot of people getting paid under the table, right? Because th there's, there's no, there's yeah. no, there's no way to actually get them legally into the system, right? But there's other people that they have them on this kind of fake sort of like system, like they're actually like an I like a fake number and stuff, yeah. And they're and they're paying a bunch of taxes and getting no rep legal representation of anything. Mm. So they're yeah. they're they're paying into Social Security, they're paying into four one ks. Oh, I can tell you, they do it my stolen, company. I and take it out. Yeah. You know, and, well, and, take it out and well, match it. Yeah. You know how the government says what, thinks about that? Well, we're stealing Social Security from everybody anyways by, you know, in the next 20 years. Yeah, so. I don't believe I don't believe that <laughs> no, we're going to see Social that. Security. Yeah, I know. Yeah, we're not getting Social Security. Oh, not Fucking at all. Bullshit. Absolutely not. Nobody is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but in, in the, like I wanted to speak up the other day on the stream and stuff. Just but the, you know, it's just you know, it's it's a, it's sort of like let's let everyone talk. Like, right, yeah, 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 let everyone talk. Yeah. You know, have, yeah. have their fun, right? But. I, I was, you know, I was gonna say this. I mean, shit. You got, you got the, you got the beaner on the, on the. We might as well talk about it a little bit. <laughs> but if, or if we're being for real, right? I wanted to explain to everybody why, right? Like when we were talking about like great countries like Japan, like great countries to live in Japan, great countries South Korea, incredible places, right? But these very homogenous sort of places, what ends up happening and what's happened over time as the as the homogeny and them developing into a first class country. Their birth rates go to damn near zero. I mean, South South Korea is like if you go right now on YouTube and look up living in South Korea, there's tons of these videos. It's beautiful ways. It's like it's so cheap to live here. It's incredible. The daycare, all the services in the world, and they have the lowest birth rate in the entire planet. Why? One, 
Well, I, I think homogeny is a bit of it, but it's but the the, the big part of it is basically they for, they these are countries that end up forcing extremely high working hours on both both the mother and the fathers, and it's it, they're very these some of these Asian cultures have extreme. And this is good good on them. This is but in extreme working cultures. Yeah, in Korea, they basically destroyed the uh, the structure of taking care of their grandparents. Because like it's it's a vicious cycle. Once they started having a population problem, yeah. right? They couldn't take care of their grandparents the way they used to. They'd, you know, and basically then it's just a pyramid where uh, the young kids can't, you know, take care of them, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah. So so there's there's that, and then they start they they kind of. The, the the main thing is basically industrialization. It's it's okay to industrialize, but you have to then you have to create industrialization with space. The way they do it is that they they end up putting all the the economic incentives in the main cities, and it's very cramped and it's very hard to have a large family. And on top of that, because it, you end up having limited space, just like Bitcoin or crypto and stuff like that, when you have a commodity or something that a ton of people want, the price keeps going higher and higher and higher. And what ends up happening is that you can't afford to live anywhere else where you actually have some land. The reason the America didn't, uh, did, did their population, like, I think one of the reasons why the America's um, population growth or population birth rate didn't completely collapse is because we, we, we leaned into suburbs to give people. No, so it, it's kind of a middle ground between the family farm, a small apartment, loft, and a house with with a backyard. Do you think that do you think that was by design or do you think that because one thing that America does not have is a strong train system and we all know that they mm. certainly could. Shout out to Warren Buffett, he owns right? he owns it. Right? <laughs> but what we have is a very strong interstate system, right, which would promote and force a vehicle in very non-walkable cities in America. Yeah. Very few Dude, I live in a country club back in louisiana when i go home okay there's no fucking sidewalks in the neighborhood it's the nicest it's the nicest neighborhood in town mm. like there's no sidewalks it is the nicest neighborhood yeah in this town none but that's not uncommon now when you go mm. to europe when when you're in europe everything's walkable there's trains or subways there's ways to get around america is very unwalk it's not very walking friendly it's not very yeah. friendly to you know it's interstate yeah, exit it's, exit exit and it's very cookie cutter yep. it's economic incentives i mean yeah. like i mean like look, I'll, I'll bring up my home state right of california right they intentionally like for a long time now we've been trying to build a basically a high-speed rail to connect san francisco to la and, and connect all the major cities together and they we've had the money to build it for a long time who keeps stopping it Dealerships keep dealerships and and um and the auto companies keep yeah lobbying. they lobby they it's lobby. a lobby game it's a lobby game so it, like there's there's good and bad economic incentive but there is economic sentence but I, the the one bonus that America has is I mean what like we have a lot of land and we we keep building out and the beautiful thing is is like I, the, the square footage of the American home keeps building I really do think on the background I think America and a lot of these countries are doing little things to kind of hurt to de deglobalize and depopulate mm. the world but. Yeah. America I also, wins in deglobalization. Yes, it definitely does. But I also think that imagine that you're selling poison to the world and everyone's like, okay, we're going to take this poison. But you know you're watering down your poison while looking like you're drinking the poison. I think America and a lot of some of these other countries have been playing the right fiddle there.